think we'll be taking notes over reaction rates. You've already written down some notes out of the textbook that have to do with reaction rates. So if there are things that you've already written down, you don't have to write them down again. But there may be a few examples or things that you want to add that may help explain the ideas a little bit better for you. So again, today, reaction rates. So how can you tell in the first place if a chemical reaction has taken place? Remember that we had four telltale signs that a chemical reaction was taking place. Do you remember what they were? If you don't, you might need to put a star by it in your notes to make sure that you review it. For a chemical reaction to occur, two or more reactants actually have to be in contact with one another. If there isn't any contact between them, there's not going to be a reaction. Now, keep in mind that a gas can float around anywhere, so a reaction can take place pretty easily if a gas comes into contact with something else. All chemical reactions have to have energy to get started. This is called activation energy, so the minimum amount of energy needed to start a reaction is activation energy. So make sure you know what activation energy is and that all chemical reactions have to have that activation energy. It's going to be a different amount for each chemical reaction, but it still has to be there. Chemical reactions also occur at different rates of speed. And there are lots of different things that can affect that speed. You can increase the speed of a chemical reaction or the rate of a chemical reaction by actually increasing the concentration of reactants. So for instance, if you think back to the physical and chemical changes lab that we did where we use the hydrochloric acid to dissolve the magnesium ribbon, if we would have used a higher concentration of hydrochloric acid, then the magnesium ribbon would have dissolved much more quickly. So that's an example of increasing the concentration. You're putting more of the solution or more of the um, reactant in one place. When a solid reacts with a liquid or a gas, only the particles that are on the surface of the solid come into contact with the other reactant. So increasing surface area by breaking down the solid is going to cause the reaction to occur at a faster pace too. So one way to increase um, the reaction rate is to increase the concentration. The second way on this slide is to increase the surface area. So think about the difference between pouring a packet of sugar into a glass of tea or putting a sugar cube into a glass of tea. The packet of sugar has a much higher surface area so it's going to dissolve much more quickly than the cube of sugar would. Temperature also affects um, the rate at which a reaction takes place. If you increase the temperature, a reaction is going to happen much more quickly. If you decrease the temperature, uh, it's going to happen much more slowly. The reactions are going to be slower. Activation energy, going back to that, we said that's the energy needed for a chemical reaction to take place. Um, if we decrease the activation energy, then we make it easier for a reaction to occur, so it's going to happen more quickly. And catalysts are used to increase the speed of a reaction by actually lowering the activation energy, so lowering the amount of energy needed to start and carry out that reaction. An inhibitor is kind of the opposite of a catalyst, so a catalyst speeds things up by lowering that activation energy, but an inhibitor inhibits. It slows down the speed of a reaction. Those are all the notes for now. We are going to do a lab with this, so make sure that you understand the notes. If you don't, let me know in class. That's all for today.